What is intermittent fasting? Intermittent fasting or simply AF is an eating pattern that cycles between periods of fasting and eating. In the conventional sense, it's not a diet. You've probably heard about the most common intermittent fasting method, 16-8. That is daily 16-hour fast, like fasting from 6 p.m. to 10 a.m. the next day. Examples of other F methods are 18-6 and fasting for 24 hours, like twice a week. Intermittent fasting does not specify which foods you should eat, but rather when you should eat them. And fasting is not a new thing for humans, whether it's during the typical overnight period, during more extended periods of food scarcity, or for religious reasons. Humans fasted throughout most of history. I researched this topic, I researched intermittent fasting, tried it myself, became a big fan of this eating pattern. And in this video, I would like to summarize my findings on benefits and drawbacks of intermittent fasting and share my personal experience following IF. Coming up. Hi, Andre here. Welcome to the Practical Health channel. Why is IF such a big deal? Studies in mice revealed that intermittent fasting reset the rodent genome. The genome appeared much younger than they actually were. Also, intermittent fasting might allow various species, including bacteria, yeast, worms, and even mice, to increase their lifespans up to 80%. There is little to know this kind of scientific research on humans. But if we extrapolate this 80% lifespan increase on humans, we can predict an average lifespan of 144 years. Healthy and longer life. Very nice, right? Okay, let's talk about how exactly IF can improve our health. If you look at the big picture, we would find that the, all the benefits of intermittent fasting come from two key elements of this eating pattern. Number one is regular, 16 hour or longer, physiological rest for the body. During this period, the body flips the metabolic switch, changing its energy source from glucose to ketone bodies. It usually takes about 10 to 12 hours for the body to deplete glycogen energy deposits from the liver and shift towards lipolysis or fat burning mode, where triglycerides are first converted into fatty acids before becoming ketone bodies. Just to be clear, this 10 to 12 hours is an estimate that depends on many factors. For example, exercise significantly accelerates the fat burning process. That's why you might hear a lot of recommendations to couple IF with regular morning workouts. The second element is lower overall calorie intake. It's not always the case, but usually it happens. And it happens for a simple reason. Eating during a restricted time frame limits the number of calories we can comfortably consume during the day. Okay, what happens in the body when a person follows intermittent fasting? A lot of good things. And the key ones are the following. Reduced oxidative stress. Reduced inflammation. Reduced blood glucose levels decrease insulin levels, increase insulin sensitivity, a decrease in IGF-1 or insulin-like growth factor, an increase in HGH or human growth hormone, as well as an increase in neurotropic factors, and finally cellular repair. A lot, right? But what does all of this mean for our health? Okay, let's talk about benefits of intermittent fasting. The first two health benefits lie on the surface. Number one is the prevention of type 2 diabetes. Reduce blood glucose levels, corresponding decreased levels of insulin, and increase insulin sensitivity all play a critical role in preventing type 2 diabetes. Number two is weight loss. Limiting calorie intake and normalizing hormone levels during the fasting window lead to a calorie deficit and subsequent fat loss. Again, this is generally true, but it's not always the case. Next is improved cognition. Although the mechanisms are still unclear, IF increases the tonus of the parasympathetic nervous system, which relies on acetylcholine as its primary action molecule. How does this affect the brain? It leads to increased synaptic plasticity, meaning your neurons will more easily be able to form new, stronger connections. In other words, you'll understand and learn new material faster. Brain inflammation is reduced, Unnecessary cells are disposed of more efficiently through the process called autophagy, and cognition is enhanced. Basically, fasting makes us sharper. Moving to number four, reduce risk of cardiovascular diseases. This occurs because IF helps the body to process metabolic debris, such as radical oxygen species, also known as oxidative stress, to be washed away. 
As a result, a systemic inflammatory status reduces, preventing damage to our blood vessels. On top of that, because glucose and lipid metabolism activities are diminished, our blood vessels don't build up new deposits and stay healthy in the longer term. Add increased parasympathetic system dominance to this list and you'll get lowered blood pressure, decreased resting heart rate, increased stress resistance and increased heart rate variability. Great long-term blood pressure values are obtained and the risk of cardiovascular diseases is dramatically reduced. Number 5. Improvement of the body's circadian rhythm. Since fewer calories are burned, less inflammation occurs and the overall body temperature becomes slightly lower. Our biological clock is heavily influenced by our thermal metabolism. The result is better control of our biological clock and circadian rhythm and subsequently better regulation for the release of hormones, such as cortisol in the morning and melatonin in the evening. Check out more on this topic in one of our previous videos. Lastly, let's talk about how intermittent fasting influences cancer. Cancer's main fuel is glucose. Fasting lowers blood glucose subsequently reducing insulin and IGF-1. Both hormones are critical for the growth of cells, including tumors. Therefore, it may have an impact on cancer prevention growth. Scientists also found that IF makes cancer cells more susceptible to chemotherapy by decreasing their resistance. This is because the cancer cells find themselves in an extreme environment with next to zero nutrients. In a study on mice, IF and chemo increased cancer survival rates from 20% to 60% compared to just chemotherapy alone. And one more point on this topic. Leaf Romani syndrome is a rare disorder that predisposes its carriers to cancer development at rates approximately 3 to 15 times higher than non carriers. It dramatically increases the chances for the development of cancer cells. In an experiment on mice that carried this gene, I have increased their longevity and delayed onset of neoplasia. More and more studies arise suggesting that I have can serve a preventive function and act as an adjuvant therapy for all forms of cancer. As you can see, IF offers a lot of benefits to our health. On the negative side, this diet might result in digestive issues after eating a large amount of food in a short period of time and interferes with social aspect of eating, basically no food in the late evenings. And IF is not suitable for children and teens, people with diabetes, people with eating disorders such as anorexia and bulimia pregnant and breastfeeding women, and people with some other medical conditions. If you have any concerns, please talk to a doctor. Ok, here's a practical question. How doable is to follow IF for at least a couple of weeks? Personally, I found it's quite doable. Based on my experience, I can quite easily stick to the following 16-8 IF schedule. Usually I wake up at 5 am. As you might know, I'm an early morning person. And in the morning, I am not hungry at all. So I have a cup of tea with lemon at about 5.30 and then my coffee from 6 to 8 am. Then from 8 to 9 am I hit the gym and finally between 10 and 10.30 I have my breakfast lunch. It's basically called brunch, right? Then at 1 or 2 pm I'll have a snack if needed. Usually it's an apple or banana. Finally from 5 pm to 6 pm I have dinner and I try to get to sleep at around 9 pm. The most difficult period of my fasting routine is from 7 to 8 am, when my body and brain are already fully awake and before working out. And during this hour, I'm trying to drink enough water and stay busy with work. It helps me to get distracted from food. And I'm definitely not hungry while in the gym. But once I've cooled off, about an hour later, I get really hungry and I have my brunch. This is what I found works for me. And usually, the longer I stick to the schedule, the easier for me to do that. If you have a great schedule for IF, please write it down in the comment section below. Ok, that's it for today. In summary, I want to say that I'm a big fan of IF. It's definitely a good thing to try. I hope this video helps you better understand the pros and cons of intermittent fasting. By the way, IF is quite a new trend. It was popularized quite recently. It all started just 9 years ago. So, in coming years, we should expect to see a lot of new research and discoveries in the intermittent fasting area. Stay strong, stay healthy and see you next time, bye!